Okay. We say frictional forces, so forces due to friction. And we say forces, not force, because we have two types of actually frictional forces. We have static friction and we have kinematic friction. F of S, and that's static friction. which means object is not really moving. Notice when you put this calculator right there, well, let me take the sticky side of it. Where's the sticky side? That was the sticky side. And I'm pushing on it, but it's not moving. Well, the reason it's not moving, there's a friction force called static friction and keeping it from moving. But if I push hard enough, it's gonna move. And once it moves, now static friction is no longer a factor. We have kinematic friction, F of K. Does our book talk about that? Yep. Kinetic friction. So static friction, the object is not moving. And kinetic friction, the object is moving. Now, here's what, let's talk about static friction first. And the value of static friction, it's always less than or equal to mu s times n. And what's mu s? That's the coefficient of static friction. I'm gonna give you a chart in a minute there. I have it here, just to give you an idea what these number are. Oh. Coefficient of friction or static friction. Now, just an idea what these numbers are between rubber on concrete, like your car on a driveway. That range can go from one to four. Depends how good your tires, how rough the surface. Steel on steel, 0.74. Glass on glass, 0.94. Wood on leather, 0 0.50. Copper on steel, 0.30. Steel on ice, that's for skating. Notice the static friction is 0.1, really small. The kinetic is even smaller. Waxed skis on snow, same thing, 0 0.10. Teflon on Teflon, Teflon is non sticking, very small, the static friction, 0.04. And guess what? Your joint in your body, in human, 0 0.01. You never want to have friction there. When you start having friction in your joint, guess what you need now? Knee and hip replacement. The fluid is gone, you start to feel the pain. So you wanna make sure there's no friction right there. So let's take for example this one, rubber on concrete. So there's your car, the number could go from one to four. So let's say there's your car and you have a new tires put on it, rough tires, and the coefficient of friction here is 2.5. It's somewhere between one and four. So let's assume between these rubber, I mean these tires and the driveway is 2.5. Now, the car has a mass of, let's say 600 kilogram. That's a big car, heavy car, suburban, for example. So the maximum static friction, S maximum, is going to be mu S times N. Now the car is not moving. 
Rama, I have a stick for you in my office. Really? Yes, after class. Awesome. Yep. Is it with goals? That's it. There's at least 40, 50 goals in that stick. How many did you score last? In that one? At least 40 goals in that one. Um, I don't think I don't know if they have them there. <laughs> if you look at the car, the forces acting on that, we have the weight of the car. These are the forces, which is mass times gravity. And what's the mass of the car? Six hundred. And what's gravity? Nine point eight. So the weight of the car. is 600 times 9.8, 58.80. The car is now moving, just sitting on the driveway. That means, remember Newton's third law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The driveway is pushing upward on the car in that direction, we call it the normal force. And what's the value of that normal force? It has to equal to the weight of the car. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Five, eight, eight, zero. The reason they are equal, because if the normal force was bigger than the weight, the car should rise, go up in the air. If the weight of the car is bigger than the normal, it should go through the driveway, sink into the driveway. The reason we're sitting on the driveway, these two are canceling each other. There is no net force. Remember Newton's first law, if there is no net force acting on that, an object that's in p at rest will remain at rest as long as what? No net force acts on it. If there is a net force, that object is not going to stay at rest. It will move. In this case, it will move either up or down. The fact the car wasn't going up or down, the net force is zero. So that tells me what the normal force is. So now the maximum static friction here is 2.5 times the 5880. 2.5 times 5880. I need 14,700 Newton to get the car to move. That's the maximum static friction. So let's take the same car, this car. We know what the maximum static friction is. So this is the car. And the friction is always pointing backward to the direction that you're pushing, where the force is being applied. So if you're pushing on this car, you and your friend want to move the car out of the driveway, and you're pushing on it, a 500 Newton. Is the car going to move? Remember, the maximum static friction, we said is what? 14,700. If I push with, and it will be pointing backward, friction force always going to point backward to the direction. You want to push it forward, but the, the, the friction is going backward. If you pull on it in this direction, the friction force is pointing in the other direction. It's always backward. Now, is that force going to be big enough to move the car? No. How much force do you need to move that car to get it to move? You need a value equal or just a hair bigger than that number. So if you do 14,701 in Newton, that car will start to move forward. So the car is not going to move till that force, the pushing force you're applying, is equal to that number, I mean, just a hair bigger than that number. But now let's keep looking at this. If I said to you, not the maximum, if I'm pushing with 500 Newton, what is the static friction? Not the maximum value. How much the static friction? Keep in mind, the car is now moving. I'm pushing with 500 Newton. To move it, I need 14,700. So if I push with 500 Newton, what is the static friction? Because if it's 14,000, 
700, we have a net force. What's that right? Mm -hmm. If we have 14,700 pushing this way and 500 pushing that way, we have a net force. That means the car should move. So for the car not to move, if I'm pushing with 500 Newton, the static force has to be what? Static friction force. It has to be 500 Newton. It has to equal to this one. This is the maximum number to get it to move, but it doesn't mean the static force is always gonna be that number. The same car now, if I push on it with the force of 1,000 Newton, What's the static friction equal to? That's the same car. The static force should be, or static friction force should be what? A thousand Newton too. If I'm pushing this way with a thousand, the friction should be a thousand. They cancel each other out. You have no net forces. The car is not gonna move. Same car. If my static force, I mean my pushing force is 5,000 Newton. So what is the static friction? It has to be what? 5,000. Is the car moving? You think the car is gonna move here? No, will not move for this one. Is the car gonna move here? Mm -hmm. No, will not move. Is the car is gonna move here? No, will not move. When is the car gonna move then? When the static friction is less than. Yes, yeah, correct. When this is less than that force, or this one is more than that. So if this force is more than that number, the car will start to move. And once the car starts to move, we can't use that number because the car is moving, we have to use what? Kinetic friction. Not static, kinetic. And kinetic friction is always less than static friction. If you ever had a car that was stuck, you try to push it, you're pushing so hard to get it to move. Once it moves, you probably notice it doesn't take that much force to keep it moving. And the reason, if you look at the coefficient of kinetic versus static, this is the kinetic. Notice the static between one and four, for rubber on concrete, the kinetic is 0.8. Steel on steel, static is 0.74. Kinetic, when things are moving, 0.57, smaller. Glass on glass, 0.94, this is 0.4. Wood on leather, 5.336. Steel on ice, ice skates here. 0.1 for static, 0.06 for kinetic, 0.06. Teflon on Teflon, 0404. Now look at actually the joints in humans. 0 0.01, 0 0.003, way smaller. So the kinetic friction, we'll show you in a minute the value of that, but I want people to understand that the static friction does not always equal the maximum value it's always less than or equal to that maximum value if the object is not moving. If the object is not moving, the biggest force I can put here is 14,700, and that object will not move. Once the object starts to move, I don't have static friction. Then what do we have? We have kinetic friction. So what is kinetic friction? We call it FK, and FK is equal to here, not less than or equal to, once the object is moving, the kinetic friction is constant. The value of that, mu K times N. 
mu k times n. Again, take that car we looked at, that's 600 kilogram. It had a weight down of what? Of, what was that number, 5880, was it? That means the normal force upward is also 5880. And you apply the force bigger than 14,700. You apply the force of 20,000 newtons pushing it. Is the car going to move? Yes. The car will move, why? Because your force that you applied here is bigger than the maximum static friction. Again, the maximum static friction for that car we've been studying is what? 14,700. That's the stat maximum static friction. So that's the reason why the car will move. Now, according to the book, it says, well, rubber on concrete, it's 0.8. And that's really not accurate because it depends. Is it dry? Is there ice in it? Is it wet? That will change the number. But let's say I'm UK for your car. And again, are the tires bald? There's nothing left on them or good tires? Let's say I'm UK for this is actually 0.6. UK because we know the car is going to move. So we have kinetic friction. The whole time the car is moving on the road, if I do the free, if this is the car, if I do the free body diagram on it from last class, free body diagram, we get the weight down, which is what? Five. 8, 8, 0. We get the normal up there. 5, 8, 8, 0. We get this force, the 20,000 Newton pushing to the right. That's the push force, P. Some uh, driven or the engine pushing you. What else we have? If you are moving to the right, where is the friction pointing? To the left, always backward, to the direction that you're moving. It will be a kinetic, not a static. Static one just to tell us if the car is gonna move or not. Once it's moving, it's a kinetic friction. And it's equal to mu k times n. What is my mu k here? It's 0.6, and what's n, the normal force here? Now let's talk about the y direction versus the x direction. In the y direction, is there a net force? Do you have a net force in the y direction? No. This one cancels that. This is pushing up, this is pushing down. Or pulling up, pushing down. They equal to each other, they cancel each other out. So F net in the y direction, there is no net force.
so the car is not going to move up and down. In the x direction is there a net force? Do we have a net force? We have the 20,000 pushing to the right minus because the friction is backward. So we actually have what 16,472 Newton which direction? To the right. That's the net force. We get this much in that direction, this must this 3528 backward, the difference between them is going to be in that direction. So since the net force is pointing to the right, which way the car is going to move? To the right. Car will move to the right. So let's calculate the acceleration of the car. Newton's second law says F net equals mass times acceleration. The F net is 16,472 equals the mass. What's the mass? The mass is 600 times the acceleration, A. The acceleration is going to be what? Huge number. One, six, four, seven, two, divided by 600, 27.4. meters per second squared. By the way, that force, 20,000 Newton, that's a lot of force. If you look at that number, you almost have 3G on your body. Gravity is 9.8. If you divide by 9.8, that's almost three gravities. It's like being in a spaceship. When that spaceship takes off, the force on these people, even a roller coaster, when you go on some of these roller coasters that spin so fast, your body's stuck to the wall, you can't even move because the force on you, the, the gravity on you, acceleration is like 3, 4 G on your body. F15, when they make these sharp turns, they can hit about 11 Gs on the, on the body. Now a normal person, if you were in the back seat, you'll pass out. You're just gone. You'll throw up and you'll pass out. Pilots don't pass out, they wear that special suit to keep the blood from moving up and down, to hold it. But that's a lot of acceleration there, you know. That's a huge engine. That could be one of those cars you see on TV trying to go like break the speed of uh, sound. In the desert, they have a jet engine on the car. You crank it up, your head snap backward, you can't even move. But that's how we have to include now friction in our problems. If it doesn't say frictionless, we have to include it in. You can't just say, oh, it's not there, or it doesn't affect it. Oh, it does affect us. Let's take another example. Really, these are applications, but I'll make another one. Then I'll do more applications. It's summertime. The weather is beautiful out there. Some of you might have a pool there, you know? So you got the slide. If, if you have a pool, you probably have a water slide going to the pool. It looks like this. And I don't know what the angle of the water slide here makes with the horizontal. Let's pick a number. This is like, what, 20 degrees? And you are sitting right here. You're going to be sliding into the pool. There's a person sitting. Nobody's pushing. Sitting there. 
If you try to go on a water slide in the summer and you sit on it, you're probably not sliding. Why? You stick into it. Your body stick into it. There's friction there. So most people, what they do is they have a hose that goes up there and pours water on it. And what does the water do? It decreases the coefficient of friction. That's why you slide. Or you jump in the pool first, wet your shorts, wet yourself. So when you go on it, you can slide easily there. So let's see what we have acting, the forces, the free body diagram. If you're going to move, which way are you going to move? So the mass of the person, 80 kilogram, 160, I mean 180 pounds roughly, 80 times 2.2, 176 pounds roughly, 175. So what are the forces acting on you? You get your weight down, straight down. The weight is always down. What else you got? You got the normal force, which is perpendicular to that surface. Normal is always perpendicular. And there's one more force if you are moving down. Let's assume you are moving, mu k here equals, I don't know, 0.3. I'm assuming you're moving because I gave him UK. If I give him US, I can tell you if you're going to move or not. Let's do that. Let's give you also some US here. We'll see if you're going to move or not because I really have no idea. Higher than 0.3, I'll go 0.5. Now your body wants to slide which way, up or down? If you're sitting on that, um, you want to slide down. So the friction force in both cases is going to be where? Pointing in that direction. F, either static or kinetic. It depends if you're moving or not moving. But it's going to be pointing backward. So that's where your free body diagram. So if I change my axes here, I say, you know what? Let's make this my y-axis. This is y. And let's make this my x-axis. If you, and you see your weight, if you turn the paper like this to look normal, because you and I are used to seeing the x and y axis looking like this, not on an angle. You can see this weight in which quadrant? Quadrant 3. So if you want to come back here and graph actually these forces and make the x and y axis look normal, you can say, I got it. This is what I have. I don't know why I use that marker. I have the friction force in this direction. See it? That's the friction. I get the normal in that direction pointing upward. And I get the weight pushing down here on an angle. This is the weight, which is equal to mass times gravity. And if this angle 20, then this angle is 20. That's what we did the last time. So the 20 is really with respect to the y-axis, not the x-axis. So you want to break it down? This is the normal. This is the friction, that direction. And I'm going to take this force and break it down. It's going to have a component in this direction. I'm going to put it next to that so you get to see this. I'm breaking it down. But it's going to have a component in this direction. And it's going to have a component in that direction. So 
So that force, that weight there, is going to be broken down to two values. The one in this direction, that's the x value, I know your mind thinking it's cosine, but it's not. It's the sine. And I said it last time, the reason this is the sine, because the angle is given to you with respect to y. So this is m g sine theta. And this one is m g cosine theta. So if I do the math on them, my mass for this is 80, gravity is 9.8, and theta is 20. So 80 times 9.8, oh, okay, turn on first, 80 times 9.8 times the sine of 20 degrees, 268. And this one is going to be 80 times 9.8 times cosine of 20 degrees. And that's 736. Now, if you're on that slide, let's go back to that water slide. If you're on that slide, you're not going up and down in the y direction. You're not moving in that direction. If you're not moving in that direction, that tells me the net force here in the y direction have to be zero, or up has to equal to down. So my normal force in this case will have to be what? 736 Newton. It has to be. Otherwise, if this piece was bigger, you'll put a hole in that slide there and break it. And if that normal force was larger than 736, you'll float up in the air. Now the question, are you going to move? Is this force going to be strong enough to move you? Remember, if that water slide is not really steep, you're not moving. You can put water on it, you're still not going to move. The friction force is probably going to be larger. If it's really steep, like 90 degrees, you'll slide down. So let's see. What is the static friction, Fs, to see if it's big enough? Because I need a force of 268. I need that 268 to be bigger than the maximum value here. So what's Fs max? It's going to be mu s times n. And what's mu s here? 0. 0.5. And what's n? 736. Guess what? You're not going anywhere. Point 0.5 times 736, 368. Is that force bigger than that number? You're not sliding. So since the 268 is less than the static friction, the maximum value, you will not slide. You're stuck on that slide. You'll be sitting on it. It's not going anywhere. So when people design these water slides, they got to think about all the stuff. What angle I need to make it? Or what surface should I use here? Maybe I'll make it smoother where these numbers are smaller. If I made this number 0.2, for example, if I put 0.2 here, yeah, you'll slide. So they might get some of like saran wrap and like put it over it and make it uh, stick to the wall and or put polyurethane, make it really shiny, slippery. But you got to do something for that water slide to move. Or you can increase the angle. Now, if I increase the angle to 40 degrees or 50 degrees, would you move? So the same story. But now change the angle instead of 20 degrees, make it steeper, make it 40, 50 degrees. Let's say 50 degrees. So the same problem, mu k equals 0.3, mass equals 80 kilogram, and mu s equals 0.5. But now the angle is not 20 degree angle. We're going to make it 50 degree angle. Oh, 
I already jumped to this. Uh, flip the page. I got to draw it first. Mu k, what was it, 0.3? Mu s equals 0.5. And the mass is what, 80 kilogram? I jumped to that. So I'm going to redraw the picture first. So we're making the angle now 50 degrees instead of 20 degrees. Again, I have no idea if this is going to be big enough to move you. I picked these numbers from UK and US. And I can look and see what we have for rubber here. Wood on leather, nope. Copper on steel doesn't help me. Rubber on concrete, what? By the way, rubber on concrete, when it's dry, one to four. When it's wet, it's only 0.3. So even if you have a good tires on a rainy day or a snowy day, when you step on the gas, a lot of times you hear your tire spinning because the friction force is really small there. So let's see if these numbers will do it. I'm making these numbers up. Again, I get the weight straight down. I get the normal force pointing upward. And I get the friction going backward. Again, if you make this as your y-axis, so if this is 50, this is also 50, and I make this my x-axis, so this is the weight. So here's what we have. I tried to jump to that in the last picture I drew before I did that one. I have the normal force pushing upward. I get the friction force in this direction. Now I get the weight in this direction. Mass times gravity is the weight. And this angle is 50 degrees. I'm sure it's not the scale. Obviously, this is much smaller than this. This supposed to be 40 and 50. So I should have changed that. But we're not drawing it to scale. So when you break this one down to x and y component, that weight there, just like before, back here. I have the normal pushing upward. Friction force pushing in that direction. And I'm going to break this one down to two components, one in this direction and one in this direction. The one in this direction, mg sine theta, which is what? 80 times 9.8 times sine of 50. Eighty times 9.8 times the sine of 50. 600. And in the one this direction is going to be m g cosine theta. 80, 9.8, cosine 50. So 
So what is my normal force? My normal force is going to be what? It's going to equal to that number. You're not going to be going up and down on that slide like this, sliding, bouncing. You're going to slide if you're going to slide down. So the force pulling in this direction, which is a portion of the weight, is pulling you in this direction of 600. If that friction force, the static friction, is less than 600, you will slide down. So what is F static maximum value? Is equal to mu s times n. Mu s is 0.5. N is what? 503. It's 251.5 Newton. Is that force bigger than this? Yes. So since the 600 is much larger then 251.5 the person will slide down will move down down the slide so we know he or she going to move but once it starts to move I can't use the static friction because you are moving so that friction force just to tell me if he's going to move or not, if she's going to move or not. Once it's moving, I can't use that number. I need to get what here? The kinetic friction. So let's draw a picture again. One more picture. Because you are moving now. We have the normal in this direction, which is 503. We got the component of the weight down, that's 503. We got this force down to the left, which is what? 600. And we have a force in this direction. And that force is not 251.5. It is what? It's F of K. And F of K is mu K times N. What's my mu K here? Remember, my mu K for this example was what? 0.3. And what's N? N is 543. So that's 150.9, let's say 151. So the friction force is going to be backward of 151. This force in this direction of 600. Is there a net force in the x direction? Yes. And how big is that force? Is it 600 minus 151? Mm -hmm. Which is what? 449, I think. Mm -hmm. In which direction? To the left. So is the person going to slide? If there's a net force, Newton's first law says what? If there's a net force, you will slide. So uh, Newton's second law says F net now equals the mass times acceleration. F net is 449. The mass of the person is 80, and the acceleration is A. Four four nine divided by 80, it's 5.61 meter per second squared. Which direction? Down the slide. So 
the person will move down. Obviously, you're not going to move up the slide if you just sit on it, but you're going to move down the slide at an acceleration of 5.61 meters per second squared. Okay, what we're going to do actually now is do a lot of application, mix and match different things with them and see what will happen. So applications of Newton's law, some with friction, some without friction. But before we get going with that, let's take a break because we've been recording for almost an hour. So we'll take a short break, then we'll do the other video and we'll do more applications on that video.